So then, one of the activities that we did quite recently uh, from the perspective of this recording was to create a chair that looks not dissimilar to this. Um, there's a lot to this object, so just like we did with Sputnik, I'm going to try and describe it as a series of components. I would hope by now you'd look at this object and go, well, the chair probably is the dominant characteristic, or this, the seat of the chair, I should say, and I would always recommend starting to build that. We've also got the back of the seat, uh, the uh, back rest. We've got a joining uh, bit that joins the two together. We've got these little individual details here connected by things that look like hoses. We have two or three cylinders, depending on how accurate you wish to be. And we have five legs with wheels. This is my attempt. And actually it was a lot of fun to make. There's quite a bit to this object. And I'm going to talk you through it bit by bit. Key things I just want to show you. Uh, this really complex looking object here, um, it's a hose, there's a there's a object that's literally a button to make a hose, so life is easy if you're trying to do something like that. They used, I used a lot of FFD in this object, which is freeform deformation, so we're going to see quite a bit of that. We're also going to see quite a bit of how you can use line and extrusion, which is how I created um, the bottom most areas, and I use chamfer cylinders for the wheels. Um, all I did for the back, you can see a little bit of extrusion modelling going on at the bottom to create that hard edge. I did the same on the back. A lot of FFD and a lot of chamfer boxes. Okay, so let's see how we did it. So what we're going to start with here, we've got a blank scene, uh, and we're going to start by creating the seat of our chair. As before, I mentioned that the best way to do that is through the extended primitive of chamfer box. Remember the way you get there is you click on create geometry. It's a geometric object. By default, you're on the standard primitives, which include things like Happy Teapot, but we don't want Happy Teapot, not yet at least. We instead want the extended primitives, and we're going to use a chamfer box. It doesn't really matter which direction that you're going to create your object, but I'm going to go from this point here being the back, and this point here being the forward, and then we're going to have it east and west of it. So I'm going to create my chamfer box. Again, it really doesn't matter how big you create it, I'm just going to create it broadly square, and you can see that the last time I created an object, it's remembered my defaults. And I just put a few segments in there. We're going to add a lot more segments to this object. Remember the chamfer box? The way you create it is it's the same way you'd normally create a box with one additional property. So the third time you click, the second time you click, it's interesting how much chamfer you wish to add. And on your chamfer box, under the modifier panel, you can change the amount of fillet, which is just how round it is. You can also change the number of segments and how many segments go into that fillet. We don't need very many. I'm not sure if you can see, but changing the fillet segments changes the amount of fillets that go into it. I'm just going to change this colour to a little bit more of a dark blue, just so it's more visible. There we go. That's much more obvious what's going on there. I don't want too many fillet segments. I'm quite happy with about four. What I do, however, want is an awful lot of height segments. I want a lot of... actually, no, I'm happy with two height segments, but I do want a lot of width. I'm going to say ten of those and a lot of length. I'm going to say ten of those as well. Because this is going to be curved, if you remember from when we tried to bend a box, if it doesn't have a lot of segments in it, it won't work correctly. I've got my reference photos all up and ready to go, so I've got that reference photo there, and I've got another reference photo. I've been googling... Um, blue computer chairs like you wouldn't believe. Also, 50 quid for these blue computer chairs, who knew? So we've got this chair here. We're going to start by creating um, the undulation, the dip that we've got in here. And we're going to create the, the roundifiedness, round element of the object itself going from a box. Close that down, close that down. 3ds Max is what I want. Now, I'm going to do this the way I actually originally learned to do this. So when I was doing my experiment, obviously I, I create a test model first, so I, I know what I'm doing when I show you guys. Um, but what I've done here is I'm going to show you the way I did it and then learned a better way. So I'm going to show you the bad one first, FFD. FFD is the tool we're going to use, but let me show you its limitation. You click on the plus and then you grab its control points. I've used FFD 4x4x4 and I'm going to scroll up. So I'm now looking down on my object. I'm going to click at the corner Control, click and drag that corner, click and drag that corner, click and drag that corner. Now what I want to do is to pull them together, so if I were to do it one at a time, I could do one at a time, but that's horrible. So instead having that all four selected at the same time gives you the opportunity to scale it in exactly the same way that we would have done um, if we'd selected vertices. But we don't want to use 
edit poly at this point because we'd have to click each and every vertex and we want a little bit of curvature we don't want it to be absolute the other thing that i'm going to do is i've realized this seat is too tall so if i just go back to my settings you can see i haven't yet squared these numbers up so i'm going to have a length of 60 a width of 60 and a height of 17 seems too much i'm going to go with about 12. a fillet of about 4.5 so that's knocked the corners off quite nicely i'm going to go back to ffd and click back on its control points and what i'm going to do now is grab the edge so you see that would be the rightmost edge as if we're looking at it and this would be the leftmost edge and i'm just going to use the uh, move tool to pull those up which will create kind of the the dip in the seat which is what we're looking for and what i'm also going to do knowing that this is the front i'm also going to move this down and pull the next one back up a little bit so you can see that creates the kind of lip that you might see there a little bit of a drop down it may be more prominent to the ones in um, in coombs wood but trust me it's there so we've got a bit of a groove we've got a bit of a dip and we've got a bit of a lowering so we've knocked the corners off it as well the thing that i now want to do though is I want to take all of these polygons down here and I want to extrude them out. So what I can do here is apply edit poly and what I basically want to do is to grab all of these polygons here and that's oh, that's going to be awful and I'll show you why. I'm going to go to polygon mode again you can do this by clicking the little plus and going to polygon mode it's exactly the same thing and what I want to do at this point is select everything on the bottom row so I'm going to use a marquee if ever you want to make a selection and not have the risk of moving it you can use that button there in sorry that button there select object and that means that you will never accidentally click and drag as you can possibly do so I'm just going to use the select tool and oh that's going to be really difficult I'm now going to have to hold down alt select all the bits I don't want I don't want that I don't want that oh it's going to take me forever so there's an easier way do you remember when that chamfer box was new? It uh, it was square on. So I'm going to delete edit poly to show you what I mean here. I'm going to turn off FFD. So the little light bulb, you can turn modifiers on and off. I'm going to turn FFD off. Do you remember when it was like that? All square, happy with life. What I now want to do though is I can, if I used edit poly at this point, it would have been very, very easy to make that selection. So that's literally what I'm going to do. I've just added edit poly. And by default it puts it at the top and you can just drag and move these modifiers around remember this is called the modifier stack because you stack modifiers on top of each other and can move them around the influence happens bottom up so things that happened first second third fourth and it is like traveling back in time so with ffd turned off i can now make my edit poly selection just by going i want all of it I'm gonna be lazy here I want all of it but I don't want the top bit so I'm gonna hold down alt and say I don't want that cool I've got my bottom that was really really easy let me show you that one again select everything or we could just select the, the bits that we know we're gonna need and if I zoom in or maximize it so it's easy for me to do out and click the bits you know you don't want which is like that I can see a little red sliver going through there and that suggests the uh, the polys that are going all the way through the bottom of my seat now i'm going to use the extrude tool to do this so under the edit polys mode um, i'm going to use extrude i could use bevel but i'm just going to extrude it out at this point i'm just going to extrude like so now what is impressive here is what i did earlier with ffd or i could have done it afterwards i didn't have to do it first when i turn it on watch what happens shazam and what this has done is that's applied the ffd to the to the object after it had been edit polyed so you get that that nice effect we could also have extended our selection to this back row here if we wanted to what's nice is with edit poly um clicked on if i if i turn it back on and go back to polygon mode it remembers my last selection so if i wanted to move those down a little bit more i can do that and then go back to ffd and i have that come through really really nice uh, and again if i decide that i i cock something up completely at that edit poly stage i can just right click and delete it to get rid of that but i'm happy with it so i'm not going to now the key thing to remember is this and this the seat and the backrest are kind of the same there's a lot of similarities in there so there's no point remaking it the other thing i'm just going to make sure i've done at this point is center my seat which i haven't done 
I'm just going to center it, right clicking on the move uh, tool, 0, 0, 0, enter, middle of the world, make me happy. What I'm now going to do is to take a copy or take a clone, which I've since realized if you're going to edit and clone, it's actually Control V is the shortcut for cloning things. I learn something new every day. But I'm going to use Shift and Drag to make a clone. What I want to do here is I want to keep that bit of edit policy. I'm just going to rotate that up and that's going to become my backrest. I want to keep the edit poly of the back, but I don't necessarily want to keep the same bit of FFT. So I'm going to go to the control points, grab the topmost control points, and move those up, dragging everything up. And now I've got this row here selected. I'm not sure if you can see that very well, but that's that bit of the lattice work up there. And if I scale them together, it comes to more of a point closer to how that does, quite fat at the bottom, quite narrow at the top. And if I wanted more curvature on the bottom of my seat, I can do that by grabbing those two, um, that side of the latticework, that side of the latticework, moving those up. If I wanted it to be chunkier, I can scale that outwards. Perhaps I would need to take all of those and all of those, scale them out a little bit chunkier at the back. I want to leave that in, perhaps it's something we decide to keep. Now, I don't really care about the original sizes of this seat. I don't really care how many units wide it was, because when you start playing with Edit Poly or FFD, you find that you just scale things instead, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, looks like chair, happy with that. What I'm going to do, though, is position my seat just so it just above, almost touching, but not quite. And the curve that I've got on the seat just so happens to kind of be matching the curve I've got, or oh, sorry, the curve of the backrest kind of matches the curve of the seat, and it looks all like I planned it. What I now want to do is to connect this solid piece of the backrest, which would be black in our photo. I can't, obviously I don't have a decent picture of the back of it, but we can see the bottom of the seat. It would be black and the padding would be blue. I'm just going to connect that with something. There's a bunch of different ways we can do this, but I'm again just going to use a chamfer box to do so. I'm going to put my chamfer box in. I'm not going to try and put it exactly where I want it to be. I'm going to move it out so I've got space to work on it. Um, it absolutely does not need that many segments. I'm going to give it three that way, three that way, and one height segment should be all I need. I do want it to be not very long in this context. From this angle, the y-axis uh, is the length, and also I want it to be quite wide, so about 25. And a height, 2.5, 3, 3. What I'm going to do here is position it broadly so it's just slotting in to that little groove that I made, just slotting in there at the very, very bottom. And I'm going to curve it up. The way I'm going to curve it is for the use of the bend modifier. Now, if you remember when we tried to bend uh, boxes earlier, or earlier on in the year, if you don't have a lot of detail or a lot of segments to it, it will bend in straight chunks. That's kind of what we want to do here, so that's desirable. So if I bend by changing the angle, oh, that's not what I want. So perhaps I want to try the Y axis. Well, that's not really what I want either. Try the X axis. Oh, that is kind of what I want. Perfect. So I'm going to change the angle there to a value. I'll just put it at minus, I'll say minus 160. And now if I rotate it, I can square these things up so it is kind of fitting. If it's not big enough, go back to the chamfer box and increase its height, increase its length, width, third times the charm, until it kind of fits. If you want to go back to bend and make it more bendy, perhaps we want it to be exactly 180 degrees, you can do that and just rotate it so it fits. I think in this case I don't really want it to be 180, I do think about there is about right, so what's that, about 136. Again, I'm not too fussed about being hyper accurate at this point. I just want something that, from a glance, looks okay. Doesn't look too bad, doesn't look too bad at all. We've got that little bit poking through the back, so I could tuck it all in. And that looks okay. From a distance, that looks absolutely fine. So far, so good. What I can now do is drag the entire contraption 
and move it up. And I'm just going to eyeball to where I think a seat should be hovering about there. I'm imagining a pair of legs. I'm imagining someone sitting on it. But what we're now going to do is to put the uh, the two cylinders in. I'm only going to do two. I'm not going to bother with that one, but you could if you wanted to. A uh, very, very easy technique for putting them in. I'm going to create my cylinder. and I'm just going to use a bog standard, uh, literal standard uh, cylinder. I'm going to put that in the middle of my world. And I'm going to make it up. doesn't matter how big it is, just making sure that it's in the middle of my world. Because I'm going to modify it anyway. I never ever create something the, the right size just using drag and drop. I think it's almost impossible. And again, I'm just going to eyeball this. I think about seven, maybe about six, six. Height, I'm going to try 15. No, that's too short. Try 18. And also, if you want to increase the number of sides, if you want it to be smoother, I tend to put my cylinders about 18. I recommend going up in units of four and using uh, at the very least. Um, even numbers. Makes you easier if you're trying to do things that are really quite clever later on. Now I've got that cylinder. I'm going to hold down shift and drag to make a clone. I just want to copy this time, not an instance. I'm just going to copy it and I'm going to reduce the radius. Kind of looks all right. Perhaps that's too thin. And sometimes it's not about being accurate. It's about making it look like it would work. And sometimes that's enough. It's going to change the color of these so they're not as obvious. They don't look the same. The colour doesn't really matter at this point, just going to make it white so we can see it more clearly. So far, so chair. What I now want to do is this quite complicated looking shape. I'm going to say shape down there. What we're going to do is use a line to create it. And I'm going to use my left viewport, so I'm looking square onto the chair. I could snap one to one side and snap my reference photo to the other. That works just as well for this bit. I'm going to use splines, so I'm going to use the shapes for this. Remember, a shape is different to geometry, a shape is not a geometric. And I'm going to use a line. We're not going to use lathe for this, we're going to use extrude. So I'm going to create the outside of that object. And I'm going to do so, remember, anything that we extrude has to be a full loop. So it's going to be not quite straight. Then there's going to be a bit of a curve, then it's going to come down a bit, then it's going to go straight for a bit, then there's going to be a bit of a curve. Again, notice I'm clicking and holding. That's going to go there, and then I'm just going to join them together. It will say close spline when you click at the end point. That will take you ages to get good at. I cannot tell you enough about that. It will take you ages to get good at dealing with lines. Once we've got it, as long as everything is fine with it, you close the loop and you haven't done anything strange with it, you can apply extrude. Now, it just so happens that my default was set to set to that, but what yours will do is it will appear like so. If it doesn't appear like so, uh, it means you haven't closed your loop. If it's just doing the outside ring, you haven't closed the loop. Also, you can make sure that you cap the start and cap the end, otherwise it won't do that. They should be selected by default, but if it isn't, there's a fix that we can do. I'm going to extrude it out by about six units. Yeah, I'm going to say about six units. I'm not very happy with this end though. I think that's far too square. So I'm going to go back to when it was a line, go back to vertex mode, and I'm going to grab this part here. I'm just going to curve that down. I've pulled it down. The reason why that is curving is this one here, I clicked and dragged when I made it. And you can rotate those things around if you want it to be smoother. You can scale them, or you can click on the Move tool to physically move uh, where those points are. Then go back to Extrude, and the Extrude reapplies. I think that looks OK. What I'm now going to do, I'm going to simplify this. I could easily make the little housing for the wheel, but I'm just going to put two little wheels in. I'm going to use a chamfer cylinder for this, which is again geometry. It's not standard, it's not a cylinder. It's the extended primitive called chamfer cylinder. What makes chamfer cylinder different is, again, I want you to look in perspective, but I'm going to make it left. If I click and drag, it works in exactly the same way a cylinder does, but has a new property, which is how much do you want to curve the outside, just like a chamfer box. So you see that little bit of curvature that we've got there. I'm going to use the front viewport to line them up, because I want two side by side. So I'm going to hold down shift, make two of them, leave a little bit of a gap. I could put a cylinder 
in between, um, kind of going straight down to join them together, because at the minute it's hovering. But I'll leave that as an exercise for you if you want to. Now, we need five of these things. Maths block. There are 360 degrees in a circle. Um, I want five of these things, so divide them by five. 72. That is the amount of angles these things are going to need to separate themselves by. 72 add 72 add 72 add 72 add 72 will be 360. Select all of those three components, all of those three things there. The two wheels and the actual uh, leg. If you do edit and clone, or using the handy dandy shortcut of control Z, I'm going to use the handy dandy shortcut. Uh, this will make a clone of your object in the same position. I do want this to be an instance, so click instance if you haven't done already, and right click the rotate tool. I can figure out just very briefly which axis I want it to be on. If you're ever concerned, just wiggle the values and control Z to undo until you go, oh yeah, it's the Z axis that I want. Type in 72 and it will rotate 72 degrees. And then I'm going to use the top down view to eyeball the rest of this. I know that the bit with the detail is where my wheels are, so I'm just going to move this around so it's roughly in the centre. There we go, Control v for another duplicate, rotate by 72. You didn't do anything, why didn't you do anything? Because I need to click the rotate tool first. 72, there we go. Move, position it, Control v OK, right click the rotate tool, 72. And keep on going. Now this may be the bit of the long-winded process, but be thankful that we can automate it. Control V, instance, and rotate by 72. And then just position it where you want. Again, comes with practice, little shortcuts like this. And we've got our nice little five-pointed star. Right. That's because I clicked 72 when I was on the move panel. Oh well, happens to all of us. I'm going to select all of those. I'm going to then use Alt to deselect my seat, and I'm just going to rotate, uh, move that down. This is why you always check your different perspectives while you're working. It's going to eyeball that to line up. I could be accurate about it, but that's close enough. There we go. That kind of looks like a seat, and I think it actually looks a little bit better than my original one. Um, you've got that, but if you think oh, those wheels actually look a little bit weedy, you can click on them, modify a panel, and change them, and because it is an instance, it will affect every other one that is a clone of it. Notice it's not affecting its partner to the side, but it's affecting every other one that was a clone of it. So if we set the value here to, let's say 4, let's say 4, I'm going to reduce the fillet down to about 0 0.4, and that looks fine. And I'm going to copy those values, 3.3, into the next one. Sometimes a scrap of paper really helps for this. Four. 3.3, 0 0.4. Looks a little bit better. I have a bit of a interpenetration there, so what I'm going to do is select all of the wheels, move it all down, so it's no longer colliding with it, and then select the whole thing and move it all up, so it's no longer touching the floor. If ever you are dealing with something that's going to be specifically touching your contact in the floor, I recommend you create a standard primitive of a flat plane. And this makes it obvious if your object is um, poking through the grid or not. In 2015, you shouldn't see this little outline, so it should be obvious if it's not actually working for you. Okay, hope you found that useful. As an addition, I forgot about the handles, which is something I really wanted to add. So what I'm gonna do here, just a bit of an extension to the original video, I'm gonna select my, uh, my seat, I'm going to go back to when it was at edit poly mode. I'm going to turn off FFD to do this. One of the advantages of the modifier stack is if you make a mistake at a point, the fact that you can roll back without deleting things I find very useful. I'm going to go to edge mode and I'm just going to grab that edge and, remember control for and, that edge and that edge. I'm just going to move those up. So you see how that's kind of made a bit of a groove for it all to go in. Some might call it groovy. Terrible pun. Then if I turn FFD back on, that will obey the FFD curvature. We'll leave that bit of a groove in place. To create the more complicated element of the handle, all I wanted to do for the handle is to use again a chamfer box. I'm going to create this on the floor. 
and I'm going to use the same defaults I had before. Give it a 3x3x3. Three by three by three. I'm going to use FFD. I'm going to use 3x3x3 three by three by three FFD as well to have full control over it. And all I want to do is use the control points. This is going to be the pointy end, this is going to be stubby end. And I'm going to bring it in that way, and I'm going to bring it in that way. And all I'm going to do for this side is just pull that that way. Last thing I want to do is to select all the way straight down the middle and scale that up to roundify it a little bit. If roundify isn't a word, I want it to be a word. All I can now do is use a extended primitive. I want to use that hose that I showed you earlier. I'm going to put that hose in. And there's a few properties here I want to change. Hoses are designed to be dynamic objects, so you can attach one end to an object, another end to another, and if you um, animate it, it will physically stretch. It's designed to be very useful. All I want to change is uh, have the flex start at zero, the end finish at 100, and you can see what that does is it just makes it go all the way up. I'm going to rotate the object 90 degrees, just need to find which axis, turns out it's that axis there, the x, uh, 90 degrees. I'm going to be a bit quick about this one, I'm just going to slide that so it's broadly in the right place. That looks about right, perhaps it needs to be a little bit higher. I don't think I could be quite as lazy about this as I uh, wanted to be, so what I now need to do, the height of it, I think 25 is fine for where I am. And the last thing I want to do is change the diameter, I'm going to shrink that down to about there. So about 4.3 seems okay. I'm now going to control click both of those. I'm going to increase it, realize it's probably way too big. Doesn't look too bad actually. I'm just going to slot that in. It is way too big. So, scale tool, I'm going to scale both things down until I'm happy with it. And I'm just going to rotate it so it's poking downwards a little bit. I'm just going to line it up so it's in that groove that I made earlier. And again, you can probably guess where I'm going now. The one next to it is identical. Shift drag make your clone okay and just make sure you're happy with it and that's in the right place there we go that's a lot better more complete 